This is Mitchell Schwartz, your local Las Vegas realtor since 1987. I left the client the other day and she asked me a question that I thought was common knowledge, but apparently it isn't. She asked, what exactly is a short sale? So today, I'm not only going to talk to you about what in fact a short sale is, but I'm also going to fill you in on the top three things that people do that are associated with short sales that actually cost them money. Now before I do that, I think it would be a good idea for me to point out to you that I have a website specifically designed to answer a lot of the frequently asked questions that I'm not going to be able to get to here. Click on the button or the link that says short sale help right on this website. It's going to take you to a place that I've actually designed specifically to answer questions for people just like you who need to know the answers to very important questions before they can decide on whether or not a short sale is right for them. Now, a short sale, very simply put, is when an owner owes substantially more than a property can be sold for. And for varying reasons, maybe it's a death in the family, maybe it's a dramatic loss in the income, maybe it's a, a divorce, that seller has to sell the property. Well, in a market that will bear $110,000, a seller can't very well sell the property for $210,000 that might be owed on it. A good example of that is my client, Pam. She needed to sell her property because she was getting a divorce. She could not afford the payment on the $292,000 all by herself and the market we could only sell the property for 110 so what to do what to do what to do well what we did was actually find the buyer at $110,000 we gathered up all the necessary information we contacted the banks we explained to them the market value of the property provided all the backup documentation we also got documentation from my client we submitted all that we negotiated with the bank to get them to accept the $110,000 as a payoff as opposed to the $292,000 that was owed. But what about the difference, you say? Well, the difference was this. She had to pay no difference. She had not, no issue with the deficiency, so the bank took what we gave them. She did not have to come up with any money. And in addition to that, she didn't have to sign a promissory note or anything. She walked away scot-free from this transaction and is currently rebuilding her life and her credit and sometime in the next 18 to 24 months I expect she's going to be able to buy a property again at today's lower prices. That's a total score, is it not? Well, let me tell you this. Most of the time we get the lenders and the um, banks to agree to take less than what's owed to them. In addition to that, many times we get the same result for our clients. No deficiency, no cash out of pocket, and best of all, no promissory notes. Sellers can move on with their lives. Now, here are the top three places, as I promised you, that sellers put themselves, or people put themselves in a position to cost money when it comes to short sales. One, they throw good money after bad. What I mean by that is there's a very small percentage of people who actually qualify and are granted a loan modification from the bank. And many times, it's not even really a great modification. But let's just say that they are. Well, they oftentimes, statistically, eight times out of 10 will be in default again within the next 12 months. So what they're doing is, while they're hoping to get this modification, they're actually draining their bank accounts. They're, and, and what I mean by that is they're draining their retirement accounts. Well, retirement accounts are off limits. The, if you do a short sale or if you do a modification, while they look at your financial picture as a whole, they can't expect you or require you to take money out of your retirement account to pay them. So people taking their money out of their retirement accounts just to kind of stay current in hopes that the property values will go up, in hopes that their bank gives them a loan modification, and when it's all said and done, not only did they drain their bank accounts, which is basically stealing from their future, they also put themselves in a position because the bank is not going to give a modification. Many times the house gets foreclosed upon at that point and they've got a double whammy. They lost their money in their retirement accounts and they ultimately lost their house anyways and didn't get the modification. So don't throw good money after bad. If you can't afford to make the payment, then contact a person who can get you out of that property. It's not a good idea. Just prolonging the agony is not going to help you. Number two, the next reason or the next place people cost themselves time and money is failing to take advantage of the mandatory Nevada foreclosure mediation process. Many people don't realize that once a notice of default has been recorded against the property, the bank is required to offer to all consumers the right 
to have a mandatory Nevada foreclosure mediation hearing. It costs the homeowner 200 bucks, costs the lender $200. You take the form, you send it in. What that does is it buys you time in addition to giving you a leverage to try and get what you need. What I mean by that is many times you can go in there knowing that you're probably not going to get an approval on a uh, modification. But if you played your cards right, you actually got your documents and your ducks in a row with regards to a short sale. So you can go in there expecting that you're going to get turned down on the modification and present to the mediator the short sale that you have in place and gather an approval from there. That saves you money because what you're going to not do at that point is put yourself in a position where you're dumping more money into a house that you're ultimately not going to keep hoping that you're going to get a modification. The third thing that people do that costs them money when it comes to short sales is basically getting sucked into a save your home scam. I know most people would prefer to keep their home and the bottom line is is very few people qualify for the modification. Scam artists know this. They ask for a little bit of money that seems pretty benign up front, maybe $1,500 to $2,900. I know you don't have it so that sounds like a lot but in the big scope of things that's not really a huge amount and they know that. So people in a zeal or an effort to try and keep their house will pay the money gladly because they're hoping to get to save their house. And then ultimately what happens is, is the time goes on and goes on and goes on forever. And then they say, oh, well, it's gone so long that we burned through the money. We need a little bit more money. So then they give them a little bit more money. And ultimately what happens is the person does not get their modification because the, per the scam artist really did nothing but collect the money the bank continues their foreclosure process, ultimately winds up taking the house. The person then is sitting there holding the bag. They got no money left because they paid it to the scam artist and they still don't have their house because the scam artist uh, took their money and did nothing. What a waste. When they could have started the process, consulted a person about a short sale and actually process the short sale and gotten out from underneath it because the results the same they're not going to have their house at the end of it but with a short sale they'll at least done it in a respectful way to themselves manage time with their family um, get, gain the control that they needed and ultimately put themselves into a position where they're not going to get hurt by just losing it and having somebody come knock and tell them knock on the door and tell them they have to leave this is crazy. Don't make some of the same mistakes that so many other people have made. Do your homework and ask a ton of questions. Like I said, there are lots of websites that are out there that will help you. Click on my link, go to other places, whatever works for you. I suggest you do your homework, ask lots of questions, and don't fall prey to some of the same issues that some of the other people have experienced. Thank you very much. I hope this has been helpful to you. If it has, make sure I know. If you need additional information, make sure I know that as well. Thank you so much, and I hope you make your day awesome.